Firstly, thank you for having me speak here. I am very, very excited to be here because, you know, this is Brown University. It's very exciting. I feel much smarter just being on the stage right now. In fact, I kind of prepared a little bit of something. Sorry, also, I also... Winnie. No, you've got to give it to me. Oh. <laughs> Rowan, take it home. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. That's, I'm going to show that to my mum. I'm not even joking. But uh, for the 99% of you who probably don't know who I am, my name is Natalie, and yeah, I make some uh, online videos. I've been doing so since 2006. But before I talk about that um, in a little bit more detail, I thought I'd show you a couple of the videos that I've made over time. Uh, they started off on webcam and they've kind of progressed. So the quality is pretty bad at the beginning and the quality is pretty bad now. So just keep that in mind. So as you can probably tell, I've been moving furniture around my house and I've been applying what I like to call the fuck measuring tapes, I'm an idiot <laughs> technique. Oh, dude, fuck measuring tapes. This is like just as accurate, hey. Awesome, awesome. Just gonna go over here now. Man, this is the most organic way to like measure anything, hey. I'm so smart. Look at that. I like a tiger man. Fits perfectly. Awesome. Ever notice how it's always a group of really angry factory workers who win the lottery? Why does it go down like this? Workers from a local factory win the two million dollar lottery draw. <laughs> Would they be creepy? Because when you see them, they freak out, don't know where they're going, and then run away. Would they also be incredibly resistant to bug spray and death? I don't know about you guys, but I am seriously spraying those things for about 10 minutes, and at most, it just makes a dent. And one of the things I always overreact to is when someone enters a room and... Oh my god, I'm so glad you're here. It's the most terrible thing just happened. I was driving my sister in the car, then a truck came out of nowhere and hit us. <laughs> Bitch left the door open. And even though in reality it looks like this, in my world it looks like this. <laughs> And because I'm super selfish, I can't concentrate on anything that they're saying because all I'm focusing on is the draft from the door. I mean, they said even if she does recover, she probably won't walk again. And I don't know what to do. I feel like a bit sedated. So I was recently doing that thing where you try and sign up for a username and then you remember that every single username under the sun is already taken. Okay, Natalie Tran. Taken. Natalie T. Tran. Taken. All right, how about this? Natalie likes Mariah Carey. Take it. Okay, that's bullshit. No one likes Mariah Carey. How about this? Ta what the fuck? I went into the change room and then it happened. No. 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 The change. So the other day somebody asked, Hi, sorry, would you go take a photo for me? Oh, sure. And you know, I thought I took a pretty great photo. And then I see them asking somebody else for another photo. <laughs> you fucking... I don't know about you guys, but when I take a photo for a stranger, all of a sudden I get into like serious photographer mode. Can I get you to move a little bit to the right? Oh, a little bit this way? Yeah, a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more. That's perfect. <laughs> but uh, today I'm here to talk to you guys about these bad boys right here because uh, as much as you know whether you like it or not being Asian has a big impact on who you are as a person and it will continue to have an impact on you in the future so whether you identify as an Asian American an, an American Asian just Asian just American or Australian whatever you know it's something that's going to keep affecting your life and I think this is because it's one of the first things people notice when they see you I can't tell you the amount of times a stranger has just come up to me and said something like, there is a really great Thai restaurant that I know of. It's like I go up to other people and I'm like, there is a really good cereal aisle in my grocery shop. <laughs> you 
should check it out. Uh, no, I don't usually say that, but I might say something like, oh, that's nice. I like Thai food, yum. Um, but I'm not Thai if, if that's what you're in for. Oh, wh where are you from? Uh, I'm from Australia. Yeah, yeah, but where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Sydney. But where are you from? <laughs> Have you ever noticed how the from just gets like softer and longer? And I find that the longer and softer it gets, it means they want you to go further back into your history. Where are you from, right? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh, my parents are Vietnamese, if, you, if that's what, Vietnamese, I knew it, I knew it. I knew that you were from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a disguise, <laughs> like it's, Pretty obvious, right? Uh, but my point is, people are always going to identify you as Asian. And uh, when I want to talk, yeah, when I get asked to talk about being an Asian in media, I guess, well, for me, it's kind of a loaded topic, right? You can't talk about being Asian in media uh, or Asian roles in media without opening a can of worms. I mean, you have to touch on subjects like self-identity, community, racism, community expectations. There's all that kind of stuff. In fact, I usually shy away from talking about this kind of stuff in public because for me, it's a very ongoing, very evolving, personal, sometimes conflicting and shifting conversation that I have with myself. I don't know if that rings true for a lot of you guys as well. But I want to preface this talk by saying that what I say today may not necessarily be how I've felt in the past. It may not be how I feel tomorrow. It's just how I feel right now. And what I'm saying isn't trying to represent how you feel or any other Asians feel. You know, it's just my personal thoughts. But my personal thoughts also involve things like, you know, why do we always wake up with bruises? What are we doing at night time? And, you know, does anyone else lie with their hot water bottle at night and play it like a fake guitar? <laughs> so take it with a grain of salt. But, um, yeah, back to being Asian, because you guys were drifting for a while there. Um, I personally believe that in media, in other jobs, in life, there is a glass ceiling when it comes to being Asian. I mean, there's a glass ceiling for a lot of other minorities and groups as well. But it's something that exists, and I think it's important to acknowledge it. Whenever I think about being an Asian in media, the first thing that always pops up into my mind are those websites. You know, the ones where you can upload a photo of yourself and it tells you what kind of celebrity you look like? Because my results would always be this. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, you look like Jackie Chan. Not ever Lucy Liu, never even a woman, I just want to point that out. It was just, you look like Jackie Chan. And at first I'd be a little bit offended because I'm like, you know, my hair is obviously longer than his. But then I stopped getting offended and I thought about it, I was like, well, what other options were there really? You know, when I was younger and people say, oh, well, Matt, if you want to get involved in comedy or media or something, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for Asians now. And they do that thing, you know, they go, there's Jackie Chan, there's Lucy Liu, there's the doctor from Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> there is Sulu from Star Trek. <laughs> and then the list starts to get a bit harder for them, right? They start to go, mm. there's Harold and Kumar. Ah, <laughs> uh, there is, there's Jackie Chan. You've mentioned Jackie Chan. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, there's that couple from Lost. Yeah, all right, all right. Um, but my point is that, you know, Growing up, there's very few people you can kind of identify with. Do you guys ever play the game, what celebrity would play me if they made a movie out of my life? I guarantee Lucy Liu is playing every single woman in this room. She is going to be a very busy actress when we all start becoming famous. Very busy. And you know, I, as, as Winnie mentioned before, I've made a video about this, you know, when you're a kid and you're playing pretend and they start designating characters. All right, you can be the blue Power Ranger, you can be the red Power Ranger, you can be the pink one, Nat, you're the Chinese one. <laughs> and uh, yeah, growing up, there were really only three characters that I could be. It was the yellow Power Ranger, I could also be the water girl from P Captain Planet, <laughs> or I could be the heart guy from Captain Planet, because he had some color going on, right? <laughs> and you know, aside from just the limited amount of actors that are in Hollywood, let's talk about the roles that are available to Asians in Hollywood. There are exceptions to the rules, of course, but generally speaking, I would say if you're a female Asian, you're gonna be pretty much cast as either a sex object or a really stern woman who's you know, really career-driven and has no feelings. I mean, how do they know that we don't have feelings? I don't know. But 
the other option is we can have a pink streak of hair and wear a tan skirt and we're really rebellious and arty because we hate our parents, because we all hate our parents. And the roles for Asian men, you know, you can be a villain, what? Uh, or you can, you know, I find this interesting, Asian men are very rarely in relationships on shows, have you ever noticed this? And they're very rarely the love interest, as though Asian men aren't appealing or something like that. I know again, like I said, there are exceptions. I know that this guy played uh, the lead in, in Selfie, but let's face it, it's John Cho and he's, uh, he's awesome. <laughs> I really hope people walk in right now and go, what is this presentation? <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna just do that. <laughs> Yeah, my mum's going to love this one. But uh, there, there is another role that uh, both genders of Asians tend to fall into Hollywood, and that's the comedic relief. And don't get me wrong, I have no problem with comedic relief, and I have no problem with Asian comedic relief. But I have a problem if I think I'm watching content and you're just laughing because we're Asian, because I don't find that funny. I have a problem if I'm watching content and what I'm seeing is just comedic relief or these very narrow representations of Asians and there's no juxtaposition. And I think that's the problem, right? You don't see something showing you otherwise. And for me, if I see that, then after a while what I'm going to start to think is this is what the media views of us. This is what people think. I think that's a problem. Now, I've personally been offered a few roles. Um, and I tend to turn pretty much every single one of them down for a few reasons. One is I can't act. Two is they usually have the wrong email address. They send it and I didn't mean that for you. But the third one is because a lot of the characters suffer from what I like to call the why are you here syndrome. What I mean by this is they'll send me a character description, right? So your character's name is Marie. And then under it is this really bizarre description, which is pretty much a roundabout way of describing or explaining to the audience why they're seeing an Asian on screen. So it might be like, you know, another character is Mary and John. Uh, but Mary, Mary's backstory is uh, Mary came here because, you know, she wants to further her career. John's just a cool guy, whatever. But Marie is here because her parents own the local Thai restaurant. That's her story. And backstories are fine, and so are stereotypes because they exist in every single character on TV. It's a quick way for you to get a reference, right? This guy was prom king. She's a skater, she's you know, a country girl. It's fine to an extent. But I have a problem when everyone else has a story aside from why they're there. But Asian storylines tend to be, oh, this is just why they look the way they do. This is why their eyes are small, because her parents own the Thai restaurant. I obviously sound like I have a problem with Thai restaurants. I don't. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, I would like it if that weren't the case, if we weren't constantly explaining why we look the way we do. I think the only time I ever really see this, sadly, is in sci-fi, and that's because in sci-fi we've transcended past races within humans, right? We're all just the human race. So what I'm trying to say, and if you take anything away from this day, it's that the day that robots and aliens invade Earth, we're going to be okay, right? <laughs> so if you start seeing Cylons, get your headshots ready because we're going to start to make sense. What do I do about this? Personally, when I write content, I and I, whenever I reference my family or my childhood, I try never to poke fun of my culture. It doesn't mean, like, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean that I don't talk about the funny things that they do or the funny things that they say, but I don't make fun of their Asian-ness because I don't find Asian-ness very funny. And again, like I said, this is a very personal relationship and all of you are going to feel differently. I know other people do, but just personally, I don't want to contribute to making fun of Asianness because I find there's enough of that in Western media and I find that it comes from a lot of different places. I just don't want to contribute to that. So an example of that is I might make fun of my mother, for example. So she, when I was growing up, she was always like, never ever speak to boys, right? Don't look at photos of boys. If you see a boy, run away. <laughs> she was crazy. Don't even use the letters B-O-Y because they spell out the word boy because a boy, all boys want to have sex with you. She obviously <laughs> thought I looked a lot better than I do or something because it's never been a problem in real life. But my point is I would make fun of that, but I would never make fun of her accent. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a difference to that. And I think that's what I do when I contribute to content online. I try not to make fun of Asianness while still being okay with it. I very much accept it. Um, I also think another thing that's important to think about is the way that we I guess the way that we react to Asians in media. I think there's a lot of pressure and a lot of expectations on Asian actors, on Asian writers. 
And it's kind of weird, right? How can this one actor just trying to do their job represent how I feel? They may not even be, they may not even have the same story as me. You know, a Korean American actress doesn't have the same story as an Austra Asian Australian growing up in Sydney. But I see this person on screen, I have all this emotion built up into me. I'm like, why is what they're doing not what I want them to do? Why does it not represent my struggle? Why does it not represent my feelings? And I understand, you know, why we have these feelings, and I'm sure they do too. But I guess we need to remember as a community that sometimes communities can also, you know, cause a negative effect as well. Uh, surprisingly, I receive a lot of racism from, from Asians. They say things like, you're not Asian enough. You're a disgrace to Asians. How dare you act this way? Why don't you talk about this subject? Why don't you do that? You're a slut because you, you, know, you don't date an Asian guy. All that kind of stuff really plays on my mind. And as somebody who is in media, I guess I'd like to share that that's very, you know, as I've said before, this is an ongoing conversation for me. So when people talk about shows like, have you seen Fresh Off the Bone? I'm sure you guys read lots and lots of articles about it. At first I had strong reactions. I read this and I read that. And then I remembered, you know, this is one guy's story or someone interpreting one guy's story. It doesn't mean it's all of our stories. We're not all the same. And I guess that's something that's really important to remember as well when it comes to Asians in media. As, a, as an audience, I think we have a huge responsibility as well. I hope that all of you are actively supporting content that speaks to you, including content that features Asians. And I'm not saying do it exclusively, and I'm definitely not saying doing, do it blindly because that's weird, um, but I'm saying if you see something and it resonates with you, then support it. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it's just supply and demand, right? So, and I know from being online that there's definitely content that speaks to young Asians. So if you see it, then back it up. You know, back that kind of project up. Let it be known that you enjoy it, share it. Because why would they ever make content for you if you don't exist as a market? I think that's something that we can kind of try to remember going forward. But yeah, otherwise just, be honest with yourself, make sure that this kind of dialogue exists because I think it's unhealthy. I know I've been in stages where I'm like, no, look, I'm Australian. Yeah, my parents were born in Vietnam, but like I said, wherever I go, people are going to see this and it's very much had an impact on who I am and how I've grown up. So I think it's important to have that discussion with yourself. I think it's important, like I said, to acknowledge that there is a type of glass ceiling, but I think it's also important to think, you know, maybe we can do a little bit of renovating. We can add a story or two stories, move the ceiling a little bit higher. Because at the end of the day, uh, robot invasion is a long way away. Thank you.